The history of math is our intellectual foundation to understanding science. Science. Beautiful, awesome, wonderful science. It's the creative foundation to our ineffable future. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Burchak, and this is my podcast, Math Science History. I often promote my website, mathsciencehistory.com. Of all the hosts that I've been with, my experience with Bluehost has been the best. What I really like about Bluehost is their customer service. It is top notch. You can access Bluehost through my affiliate link, www.bluehost.com slash track slash mathsciencehistory. All one word. It's only $3.95 a month if you sign up for 36 months. So if you do the math, it's $142 to start. And for me, it was the smartest business investment I've ever made. Maybe you've heard of him. Maybe you haven't. Maybe all you know is that there's a car company named after him. But whether or not you know who Nikola Tesla is, you are guaranteed to know his inventions. We can thank Tesla for everything. Remote control, fluorescent lights, x-rays, and alternating current. The system that electrified the world, which we still use today. There is a really fantastic, long-form podcast that I'd like to tell you about. Tesla, the Life and Times podcast. It is a deep dive into the real-life work and personality of this forgotten genius, as well as the times that made him. So you can join Stephen Kotowicz each month for a look at the real life and times of Nikola Tesla. You can subscribe to Tesla, The Life and Times, wherever you get your podcasts, or you can find the episodes at teslapodcast.com. Tesla was an extraordinary inventor inspired by altruism. Tesla once said, all people everywhere should have free energy sources. Electric power is everywhere present in unlimited quantities and can drive the world's machinery without the need for coal, oil, or gas. Tesla wanted to light up the world, and he did. Tesla was born on July 10, 1856, in an area that is now called Croatia. His father was an Eastern Orthodox priest, and his mother was an inventor as well. She made home tools and appliances for the home. He received a traditional education and was known to perform integral calculus in his head. In 1873, he contracted cholera and was ill for about nine months. He was so sick and was near death so many times that his father promised him that he would send him to the very best engineering school that he could afford when he was back to good health. However, shortly after his recovery, the Hungarian government started drafting young men into the Austro-Hungarian army. Tesla wanted nothing to do with this, so he escaped and ran away to a small village in Croatia called Tomengaj. While in Tomengaj, he explored the mountains, and he also read many of Mark Twain's writings, which at this point would have included the book The Gilded Age, A Tale of Today, short stories including The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaveras County, Cannibalism in the Cars, My Late Senatorial Secretaryship, and A Ghost Story. Tesla said that Mark Twain's writings helped him to recover from his illnesses, and he did. By 1875, he enrolled at Austrian Polytechnic, where he received exceptionally high grades as well as a letter of praise from the dean of the technical faculty. In his first year, he became captivated by physics and mathematics. However, even more so, he was fascinated with electricity and the new developments of electric motors. These electric motors had two sets of electromagnets. On one set, called the stator, is the stationary metal casing. The other set, called the rotor, rotates on a shaft. Inside the stator are two large magnets which form a north and a south pole. At the end of the stator is a rotating switch called the commutator. In the particular motor that Tesla first observed, the magnetic field of the stator remained constant. Simultaneously, the commutator adjusted the magnetic field in the rotor so that the stator and the rotor had identical magnetic poles. Because the polarity was the same, the stator and the rotor repelled each other, which caused the motor to turn. In one physics class, while watching a direct current motor spark, he suggested to his professor that he should remove the commutator. His professor just dismissed the comment. But nevertheless, Tesla 
pondered on this concept for years and was determined to come up with a way to make a spark-free motor. By the second year at Austrian Polytechnic, Tesla became addicted to gambling, and by his third year, it got worse. He was so addicted to gambling that he wagered away all of his tuition money. Additionally, he was unprepared for his final exams, and the university denied him an extension to study. As a result, he did not receive his grades and... He never graduated. Regardless of this outcome, Tesla remained intellectually engaged and continued to contemplate the DC motor. Then, in 1882, while living in Budapest, Tesla had an idea. He realized that instead of changing the magnetic poles to repel each other in the stator and the rotor, he could create a magnetic field that rotated in the motor. However, to create a rotating magnetic field, he would have to use an alternating current instead of a direct current. Hence began Tesla's aspiration to create a motor that used an alternating current. AC instead of a direct current, DC. In 1882, Tesla moved to Paris and found work at the Continental Edison Company. By 1884, the manager of Continental Edison Company, Charles Batchelor, had to travel to the United States to manage Edison Machine Works. He decided to bring Tesla along. Within six months, Tesla had made quite an impression on Thomas Edison. As a result, Edison offered Tesla a $50,000 bonus to modify and improve his DC generation plants. However, Once Tesla finished improving them, Edison reneged on his bonus, stating that Tesla did not understand American humor. Thus, after only six months at the machine works, Tesla quit. Tesla continued to work on his various inventions, including an arc lighting system. However, he never was able to obtain an investment for his arc lighting system, so he took work as a ditch digger. But while working as a ditch digger, he filed a patent for a thermomagnetic motor. Two Wall Street investors, Charles Peck and Alfred Brown, were very intrigued by Tesla's patent. They invested money into a laboratory for Tesla where he could work on his thermomagnetic motor. However, Tesla's efforts proved unsuccessful. Regardless, Peck and Brown had faith in him and encouraged Tesla to go back to the drawing table and work on his AC motor which he did. At the time, another electric company by the name of Westinghouse had an AC motor. However, they were only using one alternating current in their system. In 1887, Tesla realized that by using two separate alternating currents sent through coils on opposite sides of the stator, he could create that rotating magnetic field with a two-phase current. Tesla was successful. After a year of contemplating this rotating magnetic field, Tesla accomplished his goal. Soon after, he filed patents for his multi-phase AC motors, stating that these motors could transmit power over long distances. In 1888, Westinghouse purchased Tesla's patents for $200,000. The partnership with Westinghouse and Tesla would prove to be successful. In 1893, at the World Columbian Exposition in Chicago, Westinghouse arranged to use 24 500 horsepower generators to send power to tens of thousands of lights to light up the night sky. The exhibit at the World Columbian Exposition garnered positive attention for Tesla. And it's really a good thing that Tesla and Westinghouse did not stay at H.H. Holmes Hotel, also known as the Murder Castle. If you're looking for a twisted and morbid story, look up H.H. Holmes Hotel of Horrors. Many people who attended the World Columbian Exposition stayed at this hotel and never made it home. But I digress. Back to the partnership between Westinghouse and Tesla. Around the same time, there were talks about installing a hydroelectric power plant at Niagara Falls. Tesla was networking with the power plant's financiers, trying to convince them to go with AC power. While networking these financiers, Tesla kept Westinghouse informed of every single conversation. Once the financiers agreed to go with AC power, Tesla notified Westinghouse. Westinghouse then bid on the contract for blueprinting and equipping the power station and was subcontracted to build 5,000 25 hertz AC generators. Thanks to Tesla, Westinghouse beat Edison's bid for a DC power plant. Plans to build the Edward Dean Adams power station were underway. The power plant was possible through Tesla's efforts, but it was a team effort. 
Thomas Evershed designed the station so that it would not disrupt the nature and the beauty of Goat Island. Benjamin Lamb, the chief engineer at Westinghouse, created the induction motor using Tesla's blueprint. Oliver Schallenberger designed the transformer, and IP Morris Company built the turbines. Though there were smaller DC hydropower stations at Niagara Falls, they did not compare to the Adams Power Station. On November 15, 1896, the Adams Power Station was in operation. It was the largest largest AC power station at that time, sending 11,000 volts through a 25-mile tunnel to Buffalo, New York. Tesla's desire to provide energy sources to the masses was a success. Even though we still do not have free energy sources in our homes, we are able to enjoy a life of electricity, lights, and computers. We owe this to Tesla. His numerous inventions helped to create a world that benefited humanity. Tesla was a visionary who altered the course of our futures. His tenacity, hard work, and dedication were exceptional, and our lives are better because of him. Thank you for joining me at Math Science History. If you enjoy this podcast, please subscribe to the show. If you could also please leave me a rating or a review, I would really appreciate that. If you want to learn more about the history of math and science, please visit me at mathsciencehistory.com. And if you like what you're listening to, please feel free to click on that coffee button and buy me a cup of coffee. Every cup of coffee that you buy helps me keep this podcast up and running. Also, if you're interested in leaving me a comment or chatting with me, you can always find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Goodreads. Just search for Gabrielle Burchak. Thanks for listening. Until next time, carpe diem.